Whether you're a full-time liveaboard cruiser or putting your boat back in the water after winter, or say preparing to leave the boat for a few months, your galley could probably use a good spring cleaning. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my best tips for keeping your boat galley clean, smelling fresh, and bug-free. First, this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Yugo. Yugo is the only waterproof floating phone case using dry suit zipper technology. Invest in your safety, because if you don't protect it, you can't connect. Your phone is fully functional, and there's plenty of room for your keys, cash, and cards. And now, they also have one the sized for your iPad, or even perhaps a small laptop. I use my Yugo bags every day for everything, and I love them. It protected it when I fell in the water from the dinghy dock. To get the only dry bag on the market with zero phone fails, visit yougoware.com. Yugo, prepare for adventure. Okay, let's talk about spring cleaning. Really, it can be done at any time. Whether you're a snowbird just now putting your boat away for hurricane season or summer boater getting boat ready for the season, spring is really a good time for a thorough galley cleaning. Now, I prefer to tackle the job one locker at a time instead of doing one step at a time and ending up with everything out of every locker at once. Your preference may be to open all the lockers, make one big mess, and then have it done with. There's no one right way. Do whatever you want. But let me tell you a little bit about how I go about it. I start by taking each item out of the locker and checking to see if it's still good. Pitch anything that insects have gotten into where there's mold, powders that are rock hard, or anything that otherwise looks bad. My next rule is that if I've had it over a year and we haven't eaten it, set it aside to donate to a food pantry. I then wipe all the good cans and bottles down with a bit of bleach water and let them dry. While they're drying, I remove any non-skid shelf paper and bins in the locker and wash them out too. I like to give them a wipe down with bleach water too before letting them dry. And finally, I wash out the locker itself, being sure to first clean any old bay leaves or other critter control out. I just discard them. I let the locker dry, then put fresh bay leaves. They protect against weevils and items with flour, corn, or other grains. Cloves to protect against ants. It really discourages them. And I also put roach preventative in the bottoms. Then any bins and non-skid go back in. As far as the food goes, what you do depends on whether you're getting the boat ready for the season or putting it away. If you'll be using the boat, I recommend inventorying the food as you're putting it back in the lockers. Now, if you're in the process of decommissioning the boat, assuming it'll be left for months, not just a week or two, most of the food will need to come off the boat. If it won't freeze, canned goods can be left on the boat, although quality will degrade if it gets particularly hot on the boat for weeks on end. If you're in really, really hot climates, cans have occasionally been known to explode. So I would say if you're in the tropics and it's summertime and the boat's going to be closed up, you probably want to take everything off. Now, I tend to take everything off anyways, just to avoid any possible bug and mouse infestations. If it'll be hot, be sure to take spices off as they'll be totally dead otherwise. Baking powder and box mixes that contain baking powder will also die in the heat. On the other hand, if you're getting the boat ready for the season, there's probably not a lot of food already on board. Hopefully you gave the galley a thorough cleaning before you left it at the end of last season and all you're doing is giving it a wipe down with bleach water and changing all the critter proofing. But check carefully as you go through each locker. If there's any signs of mold, mildew, mugs, or mice. Take care of it before you bring any more food aboard. Problems only get worse if they're ignored. Okay, let's talk a little bit about fabrics. I don't like to leave dirty fabric items on the boat as they tend to attract bugs. It's best to wash all the towels, dish rags, placemats, rugs, and whatever else can safely be washed. Then put them in plastic bags to keep dust off. Some people like to take them off the boat in the off-season if it's likely to be very hot and humid on the boat when it's closed up. Taking anything rubber backed off to a cooler location will help prolong the life and also keep the items from sticking to whatever they're on. 
rubber-backed uh, rugs have a tendency to stick on the floor if they're left in place. And when you lift them up next season, you'll frequently have part of the backing pull off. One thing to be aware of, putting dryer sheets in with fabrics when you're storing them sounds like it'll be nice keeping them sweet smelling and so forth, but it's actually a bad idea as those dryer sheets attract moisture and they will lead to mold and mildew on your clothing where they are. At the beginning of the season, quickly check everything as you set it back out to make sure it's still clean, sweet smelling, and bug free. Let's talk a little bit about your utensils and dishware and so forth. As part of my spring cleaning, I pull out all of my pots, pans, dishes, utensils, everything else, and take a good look at them while at the dock with plenty of water. Many times, I'll find some gunk under the lip of a pan or utensils that haven't been used for a while and have just picked up some stickiness from the humid air and dust. I heat up a big pan of dishwater and give everything a good scrubbing, as well as wiping out the drawers or lockers, replacing any liners that are necessary, and so on. Make sure that everything, both the locker and the contents, are totally dry before putting things back in their places. It's also a good time to see if anything needs replacing or if you have gear on board that you never use and is just taking up space. How about the stove and oven? I'll admit it, this is just one of those nasty jobs, but it's important. Grease and food particles around the stove both attract bugs and rodents and can be a fire hazard. They can also be the source of some funky odors. If you're part your boater, it's best to do this at the end of the season to lessen the chances of a bug infestation over the off season. But if you didn't do it at the end of last season, do it now. In the typical boat installation, there are four parts to cleaning the stove and oven. Now check your owner's manual for specifics, but basically you need to clean the oven and racks, the tops and all the burners, under the stove and all around it, both the stove and the walls surrounding it. Most stoves can be removed for cleaning around them, and the instructions for how to do it in the owner's manual. Or at least you can read how it was installed and then reverse the steps to pull it out. If your owner's manual doesn't have the directions, check the manufacturer's website, and if that always fails, there's always Google. Now, I don't have any wonderful labor-saving ways to make cleaning the stove and oven easier, other than to say that spraying everything down with your cleaner of choice and letting it sit for a few hours usually helps. A good degreaser, my favorite is crud cutter, and hot water helps in cleaning the surround. And if you have a microwave, give it a good cleaning too. And be sure to remove it to get under it and behind it. Now the refrigerator, or if you have an ice box, most of us have refrigerators now. If you're ending in the season, it's time to defrost the refrigerator and clean it out. I've got a po whole podcast on how to defrost the refrigerator. Obviously, if you're leaving the boat, you don't want to put any food back in it and you leave it turned off. Wipe it out with some baking soda and water solution. It's also a good idea to dry it out really thoroughly. Now, leave the box propped open for the off-season so that air can circulate to it at least some. Closing the box up will almost guarantee some funky smells in there when you open it up again, and mold is likely to grow. Be sure to vacuum your refrigerator coils and any air vents and fans leading to them. It will really help your refrigerator run more efficiently. And then you've got things like your counters and floors and things like that. I like to leave everything absolutely clean at the end of the season and then wipe it all down at the beginning of the next season. I dig in all the nooks and crannies, fiddles, behind the storage cubbies, everything else. Depending on what I'm cleaning, I'll use degreaser, ammonia, bleach water, vinegar, baking soda, maybe even some cleanser. I started using some um, mold prohibitives, concrobium, tea tree oil, or borax and water. Those work really well. To get into the little areas, I use both Q-tips and a screwdriver with a bit of a rag or a paper towel over the tip. Some places can be really, really tough to get to. If lockers have louvered doors, be sure to clean the louvers. Dust and grease just love to get in there and do it. I found the easiest way to clean them was to remove the doors. Mine just lifted off the hinges. Take them out on the dock and use a hose uh, with a good sprayer nozzle. Quick blast of water, a dab of biodegradable soap, and then I just uh, let them dry before reinstalling them. Doors that aren't easily removed are... Uh, 
let's just say challenging. I use Q-tips in the corners of each slot, would slide a rag soaked in cleaner through each slot. But I'll tell you, it really is a pain to do. And those slots get sticky pretty quickly in salt-laden air, so it is important to do it. It's a good idea to clean any fans anywhere in the boat, or exhaust fans, or just airflow fans. The humidity and the grease produced by cooking gets on the blades and attracts a dutch, which just, it turns into this gunk. I like the Gaframa fans, as the blades are finger-safe and not enclosed in a cage, and they are also relatively easy to clean. You can actually pull the blade off, take it to the sink, scrub it there, and then just put it back on. Overall, I'll admit, doing a thorough galley cleaning is a pain. Even though it's a smaller space than a shore kitchen, it seems harder to clean because there's just little space to work in. But doing the job right is essential for avoiding bugs, rodents, and funky smells. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, be sure to subscribe in your podcast player. And I love it when you tell other cruising friends about it. It's a fun way to connect. Thanks, and until next time. Thanks.